Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you on this morning. We're uh, approaching the end of June. I can't believe it, but that's where we are. Life is moving. Time is moving. And the question we want to ask ourselves, are we moving with time? Are we moving in God's direction? Are we being obedient to the word of God? Are we learning more about God? Are we uh, positioning ourselves to be better men and women as a result of coming into the knowledge and the wisdom of the Lord God Almighty. So we give God glory this morning. We give him the honor. We want to praise him this morning. I know that sounds like so ritual, but it's not. God calls us to uh, go and to move in his timing. God calls us to pray without ceasing. God calls us to praise him and worship him. And that's what we do here at Rhythm of Life. We obey the word of God to the utmost best of our ability. So I'm happy to be here this morning. I'm happy that I can stand before you this morning. I'm happy that I can be a vessel that's used by God for his glory and to bless his people. This is all about the kingdom of God. This is all about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with you and I. It's all about God, and it's all about salvation, and it's all about gaining wisdom of the knowledge of God so that you can be a better man, a better woman, a better daughter, a better son, a better child. So teach our children, and as we teach our children, let us be an example of what a godly man and woman looks like. Let us be an example of living into and living out the word of God. So this morning, we're coming to you from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, and we'll use a couple more verses in there just to enlighten you and just to uh, brighten the, the thought here that we have this morning. And the thought that Jesus has given this morning, the title of our sermon is, It's Go Time. Go Time. It's Go Time, church. You can say it with me. It's Go time. And go is just a two-letter word, G-O, but it's a very powerful word that sometimes we don't hear or understand or sense the power of it, especially when it's being used in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let us pray right now and we'll get started. Father, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the honor. Lord, we praise you and we worship you, God. If we don't understand you, God, we ask for understanding today. If we have doubt, God, we ask that you would remove the doubt. God, I ask that you would forgive us of our sins right now, God, as we hear your word, God. Would you clear our ears and our eyes and our thoughts, God, that we would hear exactly what you are saying to us, that we would look for ourselves in your word, Father. And as we look for ourselves in your word, God, we ask that you would uh, illuminate our minds and our thoughts and our hearts, God, that you have better for us. And we're not living in our better, God. So we bless you today. We honor you today. We give you praise and we give you glory. Anoint this word in the name of Jesus. Allow me to step out of myself, God, as I beckon you and call to you to step inside of me. Use me today, God for your glory in Jesus' name. And the church said, what? Amen, amen, amen. Our sermon today, it's go time. It's go time, church. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. It's another day's journey. Yes, it is. We got another opportunity to stand before God, to rise in this day, a gift that he gave and created for us to dwell in, and we can teach the gospel, learn of the gospel, act out the gospel, and be truth tellers and righteous believers of the Lord Jesus Christ and his gospel. So I'm sure this morning, I'm sure that we awoke with praise and worship on our minds. I'm sure as a believer, you woke this morning with a spirit of thanksgiving in your heart. I'm sure this morning that you woke humbled and, and showing humility to your family members in your home. I'm sure you woke this, woke this morning anxious to get to church, anxious to hear a word. I'm sure that you woke this morning that regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you've been through, you know that the circumstance may be rough and it may be tough, but it could be worse 
So we can praise God in the midst of our storm, in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of the circumstance, in the midst of the situation, whatever it may be. So let, let's look at these three words that God has given us this morning. It's go time. It's go time, church. Go time or go uh, means that we uh, undergo a task, that we get serious about something that we need to do. We have a tendency tendency to say it's go time. You know, it's go time in sports arena and in the sports world, they constantly tell each other it's go time. Let's get out there and win this. Let's take them down. And so the team or the coach is still shouting with, as they're running out on the field. It's go time. Get out there. Take care of business. And that's what we want to do as members of the body of Christ. We want to learn how to Involve ourselves in those three words. It's go time. We want to be able to take care of God's business every single day. It's time to play to win. You'll hear a coach say that. It's time to play to win. And Coach Jesus and Coach Holy Spirit and Coach Father God is telling us it's time to play to win. I've already put the pieces in motion. I've already cleaned up the environment and the atmosphere. I have already released you from your Egypt and your prison. I've already purified your heart. I'm already indwelled in you. Tap into my spirit. It's go time. It's time to play to win. And in the gospel of Jesus Christ, when we are playing to win, that means we're living out the righteousness of God. We're living in the holiness of God, and we are pursuing others who need to hear the gospel. We are creating disciples. So this phrase uh, 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 is, is, is important to the believer because God is telling us in this passage of Scripture that we'll get to in just a minute, it's go time. He said, go. 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 He didn't say wake up and watch TV. He didn't say wake up and listen to the news. He didn't say wake up and, and take care of yourself. Take a bubble bath. And, and he didn't wake up saying uh, go get you some breakfast. And he didn't wake up telling you to satisfy yourself. Wake up. We know we need those things. They're nutritional for our bodies. So that's not what we're saying. We're talking about the spirit realm in the spiritual arena. He wants us to get up and go. Now we've got to decide where we're going to go, how we're going to go, and what we're going to do when we get there. So one definition that um, uh, that go time signals a person uh, is that you have to concentrate on your energy. You have to concentrate. You have to push. You have to be absolute in your limitations of what you do uh, in this world realm and, and in what you do for God. There are no limitations. We should be learning and pursuing God every single day in every single way. It's go time. It's time to go, church. Many of us haven't read our Bibles all week. It's go time. It's time to get back in the word. Go back. Go back and get into the word of God. Let's roll with this. It's go time for just a minute. I want to say that I remember when my boys uh, were younger and, and we would enter, uh, I would enter into their rooms to wake them up. And suddenly, um, as I'm waking them up and I'm opening up the blinds and pulling back the curtains, um, I can hear my boys say, what time is it? What time is it, mama? What time is it? I say it's go time. I didn't realize that until I, until I started writing this message. I used to tell my boys, it's go time. Go time. They would reply, what time is it, mommy? And I would say, go time, son. It's time to rise and shine and give God the glory. It's go time. My fathers, my sisters, my brothers, my mothers, the sons and the daughters of God. It is time to rise and shine and give God the glory. It's time to go to God in prayer and give thanks for this very new day that he didn't have to grant us. But he did. But he did. It's go time. Time for believers to get up and go to work. And I don't mean worldly work. I'm talking in the spirit realm, in the spiritual realm. There's work to be done in the body of Christ as well as working to feed your family and clothe your family. Being a Christian requires us to praise God and to pray to God and to worship God. And it also requires us to work. And the work includes praise and worship of God. The work includes prayer. The work includes Bible study. The work includes setting examples. It means coming into the 
temple of God and getting filled with his word and his spirit and going back into the world and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to all people. Not to go to parties every day, not to partake of self pleasure, not to go against the word of God. Instead, we must be gathering the gospel and dispersing the gospel everywhere we go. Because everywhere we go, someone is in need. Everywhere we go, there is trouble. Everywhere we go, somebody needs a prayer. Somebody needs to hear the word of God. Somebody needs to know that everything is going to be all right. Somebody needs to know. Go time is a precious time. It's a serious time. There's no time to play. When, when the football players and the baseball team and the basketball team hit the court, it's go time. We play to win. We do what we know and what we've trained, what we've been trained in. We get out on the court and we display it. And our attitude is, I'm out here to win, not sin. So believers, where are you this morning? Is my question. Where are you? Where are you, rhythm of life? Where are you, brothers and sisters? Where are the people of God? So by order of King Jesus, by the order of King Jesus and the word of God, Christian men, Christian women, uh, we enter the temple of God for what? To praise him to worship him, to give thanks, and to receive his word. We come to fellowship with God when we can, uh, attend church and when we come together, not forsaken the body of Jesus Christ. We come to fellowship, not only with God, but with one another. We don't come together to raise hell with one another. We come to fellowship and to be blessed and to be energized and to be emptied of our flesh and filled with God's flesh, and his flesh is the Holy Spirit. We've got to get out of this thing of staying inside the four walls. People outside are dying. You see them on the street. You see them on the corner. You see them in parking lots. You see them under bridges and over bridges. You see them on the sides of the freeway. People are hurting, and they need hope. And the body of Christ has been called to deliver God's hope. Go time. Go time means there is no more time for going to church and criticizing everything about the church. You know we do that. We criticize the pastor, the deacon, the choir, the this, the that. It's no time for that anymore. The body of Christ, the church of Christ, has to come together and go into the world teaching and preaching his word. So the time has passed for simply just attending church. Even though we have Zoom church and, and, and virtual church and all kind of outlets where we can have church, attending church, whether it's virtually or in a brick and mortar building, it's important. We haven't done God a favor just because we went to church. We didn't do ourselves a favor just because we went to church. It's time for us to stand up and be the church of Jesus Christ. When I hear the word go, uh, the message I hear is this church. I hear, uh, I hear God summoning me. When I, when I hear the word go, I feel God is summoning me to take action to do something in the spirit, to do something. When I feel that move in my heart and I feel that urge and it starts to consume my entire body, I know that God is speaking to me and what I am sensing, I must follow through on it. I must go through with it. It means we move from one place to another place. It means go, go, go is a word that carries a message of instruction. Two letters, go, G-O, it carries a message of instruction. Because it means you have to do something. You have to go forward. You have to go and do something. Something. You have to carry a message. Go. Something has to be done when we hear the word go. Change has to take place when we hear the word go. So the message is we advance progressively forward, building the kingdom of God when we obey his word that says go. Go. Jesus gave the go time command 
the go time command. He gave the go time command in Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20. And this is what he was saying when he was speaking to his disciples prior to ascending up, in, up to heaven. This is what he said. Verse 19, he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. The first word then of the commandment he gave them was what? Go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's the work we have to do. Go. Go. Teach. Baptize. In the name of. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the instruction for go. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to move forward in. Verse 20 says, when you go and you baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, both, verse 20 says, teaching them, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and do and lo, I am with you always. I am with you always, even until the end of this world. He is going to be with us when we go and obey what he has told us to do. I'm going to go back over that. Go. He said, teach the nations. Go. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says, go and teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo. If you obey, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Even if you don't do it, he's still with you. But I recommend that you do it, that you obey the word of God. So when people are leaving here and going away or changing uh, states and cities or moving away, even dying, their very last words are critically important. Jesus is getting ready to leave and he gave the great commandment, go! Go! And so I'm reminding you, church, you have work to do. You have praise and worship to do over the Lord. We need to stop pampering ourselves. We need to stop uh, criticizing ourselves and criticizing others. God said, if you love me the way I love you, everything's going to work out fine. If you obey me, everything is going to work out fine. Go. Go. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Don't worry about where you're going. Just go. Go and I will show you the way. Jesus' last instruction to his disciples was to go. To go and do what? To go and duplicate yourselves. Create more disciples. Make more disciples, church. We have a calling on our lives. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have a calling on your life. Go and make more disciples. Duplicate yourselves. Now, we don't want to duplicate sin and teach other people how to smoke and, and drink and party and, and be promiscuous. No, no, no. We want to teach them. We want to go and duplicate the glory of God that is within us. The hope, the peace, the comfort, the joy, the love that is within us because those are the characteristics of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The disciples were to go into every single nation, baptizing sinners, teaching them to love Christ with all of their heart and all of their soul, all of their mind, and teach them to do what? To obey God. We fall short because we refuse to obey. We tell God what we want to do. We tell God how we're going to do it. And if I can't do it my way, it's like a two-year-old, ten-year-old, I'm not going to do it at all. I'm going to have a temper tantrum. I'm going to pout. I'm not going to go. But what have you contributed to make it better, to make change? Nothing but go behind and start criticizing and talking to justify your not being obedient to God. I'm going to try to speed it up here because I got a lot to say this morning. We are to go as God instructed us. Where do we go? I'm glad you asked that question. I had to ask God to where, where do we go, God? Where, where, where do we go? And so we go to the next door neighbor. We go to a friend. We go to our families. We go to our strangers and we make disciples by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Even if they don't want to hear it, we don't want to be pushy. We're not going to be argumentative. We're just going to bless them in the name of Jesus. We're going to plant a seed, and God will send another to go and water the seed. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 is not a request from God. 
God. Let's understand that. It's not a request from God. It is not an option whether you do or you don't. It is a command, a command from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He has instructed us. He's commanded us to every believer that calls and recognizes him as Jesus, the Lord, the Son of God. He has called you and commanded you. It's go time. Go and win souls to Christ. Now, I'm hoping you're thinking about this. Where are you in your life? What are you doing? Are you playing all the video games? Are you uh, uh, hanging out at the basketball court every day? Are you hanging out in the kitchen eating and laying on the sofa, um, watching your favorite movies and binging on your favorite shows? What are you doing to build the kingdom of God? It's not just my responsibility. It's our responsibility. It's not my responsibility by myself to just clean and cook and take care of my family and work a regular job and uh, read the Bible of God, uh, the Bible and the word of God and study to show myself approved and so that I'll be able to stand before you and teach a good word that would penetrate your heart and soul. It's not m just my job. He told us to go and make disciples, win souls for Christ. So now we got to do a little soul searching here. We have all, church, don't make no mistake about it. We have all been commissioned, called, baptized in the gospel of Jesus Christ to do the work. Praise him, worship him, and work. Do the work is going into the nations. The nations are your neighborhood. The nations are those that can travel uh, out of the United States and, and go into missionary camps and, and teach the people about the word of God. We all have a role to play in this journey. We have all been given gifts to utilize, yet we're not moving forward with those gifts. We continue to doubt. We continue to sink into a slump. We continue to let Satan dictate to us who we are, what we are, what we have, and what we don't have. But you know the devil is a liar, so I'm calling him out today. Quit lying to God's people, and I'm calling God's people out to open up your eyes and see that you're being lied to. Get up off that sofa and go. We have been given gifts in which to glorify God as his what? His representatives. His representatives. And we have been commissioned to function as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a servant. And a servant has to work. Work, church. Work to show myself approved. Since 2020, we seem to have gotten things mixed up a little bit. We can worship in private setting in our homes, but we cannot carry out the mission of the church only in, um, in the homes or, or within our families. We have to go. The mission is we have been called to a much larger platform. And you can't get to the next platform if you won't step on to the first platform. Go. Share. Don't think about yourself. Think about others. God has you in the palm of his hand. He's got the whole world, as a matter of fact, in his hands. And one day he's going to come back. And he's going to reconcile everyone back to himself. Will you be ready as the church? Being a Christian isn't just about worship. It's just not about praise and that. It's also about working. We can worship, we can praise, we can pray, but we also need to do the work. And we have fallen short. We're getting lazy. We're getting comfortable. But Jesus is reminding us to step out. Go ye, therefore. Step out on faith. And lo, I will be with you even until the end of this earth. As a Christian, we have a responsibility. You and I have a responsibility to Father God to work daily sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. So let's talk about work for a couple seconds here. We're going to try to speed this along. Um, the work calls for the disciples to baptize believers. That's what the word said, right? Baptize believers because baptizing does what? It unites people. It brings us together as one body. It unites us to the King Jesus. Baptism is the declaration that demonstrates a willingness, a willingness for God and a desire for God a thirst for God, and a desire to obey his word. Baptizing is the outward sign of the inward change of a person's heart. 
I'm no longer mean. I'm no longer honorary. I'm no longer a gangbanger. I'm no longer a drug addict. My heart has changed. I'm in love with Christ. My heart is in love with Christ. And having that love for Christ, I have love for others, even if they don't love me. We measure ourselves to the word of God, not to how people treat us, talk about us, or act toward us. That's to get you to doubt God. That's to get you to turn back, to fall back. That's to get you to stop serving God. But use those people to push you forward, forward in Jesus Christ, forward in building the kingdom, forward in praying, forward in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Matthew 28, 19, 20 defines the purpose of the church. We have been believing that the church is a place where everybody goes on Sunday or Wednesday. No, 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 no. One writer said it like this. Um, when we believe the church to be just a place to go on Sunday, it is a major misconception. You're being lied to. The church is much greater than that. The church are the slayers of evil because we have Jesus Christ in us. The church are the ones who tear down the walls of Satan's kingdom. The church is the one who exposes Satan for who he is. The church is the one that walks in the power of Jesus' power. The church is the one that can speak and things will change through the power of Jesus Christ. It's more than just going to church on Sunday. Church on Sunday is great, but you've got to do more. It's a major misconception. And it's a misdiagnosis of the church of Jesus Christ. When we are allowed to experience the presence and the Holy Spirit of Jesus, the proper response should be, the proper response should be we want to worship, worship him. We want to praise him. And it demonstrates what? It demonstrates that we have faith that Jesus is who he says he is and Jesus will do what he said he would do. Worship is not a recommendation to the body of Christ. Worship is a requirement. You are required to praise God, worship God, and go. Jesus assigned each of us a work assignment in the word go. Go, G-O, into all nations. When we read this, we see Jesus has a plan to build the kingdom of God here on earth. But the believers are falling short. Some are in doubt. Some are backslidden. Some don't do anything at all. We further see that Jesus is instru has instructed all of his followers to praise, worship, and work. It's go time, church. It's go time. We can no longer sit on the sidelines when people are dying and suffering, when people are hungry, when people don't have shelter, when people don't have clues. Well, I got a job. You go get a job. Maybe they can't get a job. Maybe they have something going on in their heart, in their spirit, in their mind. Maybe they're mentally challenged. Maybe they're just struggling in life and just need a helping hand. We cannot be so critical. We have to be observant and know when to and when not to move. We have to be observant and in tune to the Holy Spirit so we know when he tells us to go give and to go do. But we just can't sit by and let and wait for other people to do the work. You are responsible for doing the work that Christ has called us to do, disciples. And if we go to verse 17 of this passage, the Bible says that when his disciples saw him, what did they do? Verse 17 of this same chapter, they said, the word says they worship Jesus. They worship him. They bow before him. So go follow the instruction to praise him, to worship him, and work for him. Even though, even though people are doubtful and rebellious, your job is to teach the gospel. The Bible says that after their praise and worship, Jesus begins his charge to the worshipers. And he said to them, the Bible says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All means everything. So whatever power you have under, whatever thing that is controlling you, God has power over that if you will surrender it to him. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. All, that means everything. We're not leaving anything out of the word and we're not adding to the word. Teach them all I have commanded you and lo, I will be with you always even to the end of the age. The charge is to make the world and everything in it look like everything inside the church. 
That's what he's saying here. Make the world look like the church, and the church should look like Jesus, and the church should function by, function by the leading of the Holy Spirit. The church should be living and striving to please God. So in other words, what I'm saying is that the world should not, the world should look like the church. The church should not look like the world. The world should act like the church. The church should not act like the world. But we got it flipped and God is trying to flip it back. Will you open your eyes, see it, hear it, believe it, and do it? So the first thing we want to do is evangelize, he's saying in this passage. He's commissioned the people. He's commissioned his disciples. He's commissioned you and me uh, to make more disciples. We must believe that he is who he says he is. We must believe that his word is true. And we must activate that word in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. Every time we show up anywhere, people should see God before they see you. And then you should maintain that character because that is your new that's your new life, characterized by Jesus. We must take into consideration, though, when we complain about our churches being empty on Sundays or at Bible study and our communities becoming increasingly um, desensitized to anything Christian, uh, it's because the work that God has called us to do is not being done. I hope I'm teaching, church. I hope I'm teaching. I hope you're getting this. Only disciples can mold disciples. If there are no followers of Jesus Christ, who's going to mold? Who's going to create? Who's going to make disciples? Get up from your place of weariness. Get up from your disappointment. Get up from your frustration and go to Jesus and get filled with the Holy Spirit and go. And when you start to go, the blessings will come down. As you take care of God's business, God is going to take care of your business. Sickness and disease, gone. And if it's not gone, God is maintaining it for you. He's helping you to get through to the other side. I love this statement of going through. You work your way through it. You pray your way through it. You don't sit down and, and give in to it. That's what Satan wants. And that's why we're lagging. That's why we're slacking. Because we're under the co control of the God's enemy. Only disciples can mold disciples like only apple trees can produce apples. Christians should be producing more Christians. And as we go, tell them about Jesus. Some people will say, oh, no, I don't need prayer. I don't want to pray. That's okay. That's not you to, for you to judge them. You say, okay, brother, I understand. And you leave a blessing upon them that they don't even hear you say, God, send another to open up their hearts to your truth. It's all work. It's always work. It's not about what you think or I think. I like to diss a lot of people. I like to what they call cancel culture a lot of people. But I cannot do that because I'm under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I have to love in spite of. Even though you hurt me, I have to love in spite of. Even though you talk about me, I have to love in spite of. I have to be confident in who I am and who God called me to be. And I have to function and operate in that and that alone. If I'm going to make it through. And if I'm going to honor the Father. So as we try to wrap this up, church, uh, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. And faithfulness. Put away the gods that our, uh, that our ancestors used to serve. Put away uh, the, that they served beyond the river. Put away those things that the Egyptians, uh, gods that the uh, Israelites began to serve the Egyptian gods and other world gods and the Ammonites gods and they got all confused and chaotic. We've got to get rid of those gods. We can't allow the God of this world to dictate to us what we do and how we do it. First priority is God. Second priority is your family. God first and everything else lines up. God first. Get rid of those gods that are causing you to malfunction in the body of Christ. Television, radio, music, Laying around, complaining, whining, grumpy, uh, arrogant, um, unforgiving. You can put a name on it. You, you, you know where you are in Christ Jesus. But we have to get rid of those gods because even though it seems like I'm right and I'm justified in what I'm doing, that's the demonic activity of Satan manipulating you so that you don't get up and do anything for God, that you don't uh, express the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's one more he has down in his entourage. And so 
In Joshua chapter, um, let me see which chapter I want to use there for Joshua. We're going to use chapter 24, verse 15. And it says, and if it is evil in your eyes to serve God, choose this day whom you will serve. So if it's an evil in your eyes to serve God, if you don't think it's right to serve God because you don't believe in God or whatever your issue is with God, he says, Joshua tells the people, choose this day whom you will serve. So Pastor Beverly is saying, choose this day whom you will serve. Choose who you're going to serve. Will it be the gods of your ancestors? Will it be the gods of this modern day, your television, your, all your um, uh, technology? Uh, will it be your house? Will it be your car? Will it be your clothes and your jewelry? So you can go on and tell everybody, look how good I look and look how successful I am. What will it be, church, and what will it take for you to give your life to Christ and be obedient to him? Secondly, we want to equip people. How do we equip people? We teach them. We teach them the gospel of Jesus Christ. We teach them the word of God, number one, but then we also teach by example, the way we live, the way we walk, the way we dress, the way we talk. I'm telling you, you want to be wealthy, get wealthy in the spirit and the material things will come. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, his righteousness, and all things will be added unto us. You don't have to pursue wealth and go crazy over wealth and make that your God. God will provide and God will take care of you. So we must learn that disciples are made not by beating people over the head with the word of God, but by teaching people the word of God and then demonstrating the word of God by the way we live our lives and the things that we allow to come out of our mouths. Teaching is so important. It's a component uh, that is extremely important when it comes to faith. Teaching is the act of continually equipping followers of Jesus Christ to be all that they can be, to trust more, to have faith more, so that they can live the lives, lives that Jesus died for them to have. I'm living my best life right now. Serving God is my best life. I gave my best to the world, but the world didn't receive it. All they wanted to do was take and take and take from me. And if I had stayed in that place of allowing the world to use me up, I would not be here today. But one day, Jesus spoke. And he said, Beverly, I'm calling you by name. Come, daughter. I have an assignment for you. And when I stood up and went to Jesus, my life began to change. Nothing else matters but Jesus. Nothing else matters but the word of God. Nothing else matters but how I serve him and how I please him. Nothing else matters than me sacrificing myself for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help me somebody. Come on now. Come on now. We got to get it right, church. We have to get it right. It's time out for playing. Number three, empower. We have to empower people. We have to empower people to trust God. We have to show them and walk with them and hold their hands till they're able to stand up on their own two feet. If you don't have enough faith, come on, brother or sister, you can lean on me. I'll have enough faith for the both of us until I can teach you and empower you to stand on your own. That's what we do for our babies when they're born. They begin to trust us. And as life goes on, we empower them to be able to walk, to crawl, and to do the things that development should, uh, developing should take place. No, no, church, we have limitations on, on what we're going to do for God. We have limitations on, on who we're going to like and who we're not going to like. We have limitations on everything. And so when we put limitations on it, we put limitations on God. God can't bring everything to you that he needs to have and get to you because of the plan he has for your life because you put a boundary line up. God, you can't cross this line. This space belongs to me, and this is your space over here. We have limitations, but God is breaking the chains of limitations right now in the name of Jesus. You will be able to go. And if you're afraid, go anyway. Do it scared because Jesus said, I am with you. I will never leave you. So what should we fear? We have limitations. Take the limits off of Jesus. Take him out of the box. Let him be free to, to prove his word to you and show you the plans he has for your life. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. We have limited supplies of money. We have limited supplies of workers. We have limited amounts of space. We have limited amount of time. Bottom line. We have limited amount of time, church. Tomorrow's not promised. The rest of this day is not promised. So don't spend it arguing. 
trying to satisfy yourself on everything and have it your way. That's what two-year-olds and three-year-olds and sometimes even older than that, they have temper tantrums when mom and dad don't give them what they want. But daddy, father, daddy, I'm a father. He doesn't give us, give us everything we want because it's not the time. It's not good for us in that moment. Maybe it's not his plan for us at all. So instead of us going and having a temper tantrum because I can't get this or that, let us dig in and press in and go and teach the gospel. We must cooperate without our means or within our means and within our limitations. We must cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus operates above and beyond any means we could ever think of. So if he's with us, we have nothing to worry about. So Satan puts that drop of fear in you and you blow it up. Well, I can't do it because I'm not able. I can't do it because I don't speak good. Sometimes I stutter. But I don't stop. I don't stop teaching God's word. I don't stop praising God. I don't stop reading his word. I don't stop praying to God. I keep pushing forward and forward and moving forward because I got a goal. There's a goal call on my life. So in conclusion, church, we are partners in ministry with Jesus. And Jesus is making his way back from heaven for the second coming. Jesus will return one day. No man knows the day or the hour, but he will return. And my question to you, when he comes, will you be ready? When he comes, he's gathering his disciples and he's going to give them an assignment. He's given us an assignment while he's away, preparing a place for us in the kingdom of God. While he's away preparing, he has given us an assignment. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Go ye therefore into all nations, teaching the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go, teach them. That's your assignment. And if you're not cooperating in that assignment, you're a disobedient. You're out of order with God. And so I'm shaking you up, shaking the church this morning to line up with God. Move yourself out of the way. Slackers, wake up. Lazy, stand up. Disobedient, bow your knees and submit yourself to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. So Jesus wants us to go. He's calling us to go, go, go. It's go time, church. Are you ready? I extend my hand to you. I'll go with you. I will go with you. And I will do my best to be as close to Jesus as I can as we walk this journey together. If you, have, if you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, if you don't have a relationship with God, if you haven't given your life to Christ, if you don't know what it's all about, if you're confused about this thing called the gospel, whatever your hang-up is, whatever's holding you back from pursuing God, because a good balance is life is to be able to exist down here with the power of God. That's how we exist. That's how we get further ahead, by existing within the anointing and the power of God. So if you don't know God in the part of your sin, I want to encourage you right now to pray this prayer with me and we'll get you into the body of Christ. It's very simple, it's not difficult. People say it's challenging, you gotta do this, you gotta change your lifestyle. No, once you give your life to Christ, God will do the changing if you are obedient to him. So Father God, I admit that I am a sinner and I invite you to come into my life. I invite you to use me for your glory. I invite you to teach me and show me the way. If you pray that prayer by saying amen, I want to welcome you into the body of Christ. Now the next step is to get in a Bible teaching church, teaching the entire word of God, not adding to it and not taking away from it. Get into a Bible teaching church. Many of you have gotten accustomed to not going to church because of COVID. 
Well, there's plenty of virtual churches. We are one of them. But we teach the word. Some of them rebel against the word. So we pray for them. And I want to invite you to come to Rhythm of Life. You can look us up on our website at rhythmoflifechurch.org. It'll tell you all about us. And then come and let's worship together. We have the great thing about virtual church is we have members all over the state, all over the nation. And that's a good thing. Those are people that we would never reach if God hadn't given us the technology to reach them. So virtual church is not a negative. Don't let Satan tell you, ah, oh, virtual. No, just remember that when you are virtual church, you don't try to do anything but listen when church is going on. Many of us like to um, double, double things. There's a word I want to use, but I can't think of it right now. But, you know, we want to try to cook and, and wash dishes while we're listening. And we want to watch a movie while we're trying to listen to the word. We're on our phones while we're trying to listen to the word. Those are all distractions. We want to be at the beach and say we're listening to the word. You can't do it, church. You're either going to be all in for God or you're not. So let's get right so we can go. We have Bible study today, communication and conversation right after this message uh, at 11 o'clock California time. And we invite you to come and join us. It's a great Bible study. Sister Rita Little is our teacher from Cleveland, Ohio, and she's doing a fantastic job uh, teaching us the word of God. We're in the book of Philippians and I invite you to come. It's an hour and 15 minutes. Certainly you can figure out an hour and 15 minutes to give to God just to check it out, if nothing else. And then every Thursday we have a prayer at 3 o'clock California time, and we invite you to come to prayer. It doesn't mean you have to pray if you don't want to pray, but being in the environment of prayer and learning how to pray and learning how to praise and worship God as this passage of Scripture has taught us will help you grow in Christ and be a better man or woman as a result of your investing time in Christ and with Christ. You can find that all on our website. And then for sharing your tithe, your offering, your donation, again on our website, rhythmoflifechurch.org. We can't do what we do without you. We have to buy lights, we have to buy phones, we have to buy stands, we have equipment we have to buy, we have to help people that are not doing so well that might need a light bill paid or gas bill paid. There are things that the church still has to be responsible for in the community. And your offerings, your tithes, your donations, help us do that. Rhythmoflifechurch.org, click the button give and it'll prompt you from there. The last thing I want to share with you is that we are having our annual prayer conference on August 26th. It starts at 9 o'clock California time, 11 o'clock Central time, and 12 o'clock Eastern time. I want you to register on our website. It's going to be a great time. We have Dr. Coots coming to us from North Carolina, and he's a Southern preaching man who knows the Word of God, and I believe he is a man of God, and he walks in what he teaches. So with that said, have a great day on purpose because you can. Take care. Bye-bye.